Hello, this is Dr. Mahesh Chanathan. And over the next few slides, I'm going to discuss about how pediatric rheumatology history and examination is different from adult practice. In the history, the presenting complaints may be uh, limping, bruising, or joint swelling. Limping, whether this is intermittent or persistent, needs further evaluation. Children sometimes present with reduced uh, school performances maybe in uh, sports activities, or sometimes they may also present with uh, deterioration in their handwriting. Joint swelling in children may be subtle, and it may be difficult for the parents to differentiate between normal and abnormal joints. It may be challenging even to the healthcare professionals, particularly when children present with symmetric joint swelling. Children may have reluctance to bear weight in the morning in cases of inflammatory conditions. The next point in history taking is to see how the child is, whether the child is irritable, clingy, or reluctant to play. Children may not be able to verbalize pain and may sometimes present with behavioral changes. And in older children, they may actually avoid activities, particularly sports activities that they previously used to enjoy. The next point in history is to find out where the pain is and to focus on localizing the site of pain. In children, particularly if the symptoms are asymmetrical and if the site of pain is persistent, that's in particularly one particular part of the body, it's more likely to be pathological. So children may sometimes present with referred pain where they can have actual pathology in the hip but may present with a knee pain or an ankle pain. The next point in history is to see at what time of the day the symptoms, whether it's morning or daytime symptoms, association with diurnal variation. Parents sometimes say that the children have pain on waking up or they have stiffness of the joints when there's been a period of prolonged inactivity, particularly after a long car ride or so. And this actually suggests an underlying inflammation. We also need to ask some questions regarding the ability of the children to do physical activity, whether they're able to run and walk as normal or whether there's been any regression of milestones. If there's only a motor uh, milestone regression, then we need to look out for musculoskeletal problems. If there is associated language and speech involvement, I mean, delay in these domains, we need to watch out for a global developmental delay or for a central nervous system problem. You also need to find out if there's any school issues. Is the child avoiding school or is there any bullying at school? Some children may present with uh, behavioral problems. They may have present with headache, abdominal pain, joint pain in a very uh, non-specific way. And in such cases, very sensitive questioning to the social situation at school and at home is the key to identify the underlying problem. In the history taking, you need to also ask about night pain which may actually suggest, in the presence of it may actually suggest growing pain, which is mostly benign. But we also need to ask for other systemic features such as fever, weight loss, loss of appetite, and so on. Because this may actually uh, suggest an underlying systemic pathology or a leukemia. Night pain, particularly which is unilateral and persistent, may be pathological and sometimes may suggest the presence of an underlying osteoid osteoma or a chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis. Is there any uh, predictability of symptoms? I mean, is there any uh, relationship to physical activity? So pain that occurs after exercise, mostly at the end of the day, may actually mean an underlying mechanical problem such as benign joint hypermobility syndrome and may suggest something like an Ehlers-Danlos or Marfan syndrome. Or sometimes growing pain may also happen at the end of the day. Are the parents using any uh, medications to control the pain? Is there any response to pain relief? If there is response to simple pain relief, then it's mostly a benign condition. The absence of response is a cause of concern. It may actually mean uh, serious underlying pathology, or sometimes it may mean that it is just a functional problem. Our questions uh, should also be aimed at differentiating between whether the pain is mechanical or uh, inflammatory. In children who have mechanical pain, particularly children who have benign joint hypermobility with an underlying syndrome, 
the the pain the symptoms are normally worse on weight bearing and particularly after activity like prolonged uh, walking and after exercise in inflammatory arthritis the pain gets better with movement in mechanical pain the pain is worse in the evenings and in inflammatory pain the pain is mostly in the mornings and the pain gets to get better tends to get better as the day progresses in mechanical pain the joint swelling is mild and transient and sometimes even intermittent whereas in inflammatory arthritis joint swelling is persistent there may be instances of uh, instability and locking in mechanical pain and this usually absent in inflammatory pain in the history we need to be particularly care of uh, the red flags and uh, these red flags may actually indicate the presence of an underlying sinister pathology you need to probe for systemic symptoms ask for history of fever weight loss loss of appetite night sweats and also in the history find out if it is suggesting a bone pain or a joint pain if it's joint pain it could be an arthritis if it is bone pain or a periarticular pain it may actually suggest a, a leukemia we also need to probe for uh, nocturnal symptoms the presence of which again may be a benign may suggest a benign condition like uh, growing pain but the persistence of nocturnal symptoms along with an unwell child usually point to a sinister pathology as far as pediatric uh, practice concerns something uh, very uh, significant that we need to question is to ask for questions which may point to inconsistency between the history and clinical findings which may lead to a diagnosis of non accidental injury we need to bear in mind the normal uh, physiological variations in children tiptoe walking is normal in less than 3 years of age flat feet is normal up to 4 to 6 years of age pesky visits opposite of flat feet is usually not common in children and it tends to be present in children with central nervous system diseases knock knees usually resolved by 6 years of age bow legs are normal until 2 years of age and out toeing resolved by 4 years of age the persistence of these sort of symptoms beyond the usual expected range age range and if it is asymmetrical needs further evaluation musculoskeletal examination in children is very similar to the musculoskeletal examination in adults except that uh, there are a few more additional maneuvers that are added we call it a uh, pediatric gait arm leg spine examination the additional maneuvers are to check for the assessment of foot ankle temporomandibular joint elbow and c spine for the assessment of foot and ankle we ask the child to walk on heels and tiptoes to assess the ankle joint and the four foot joints and the assessment of tmg is done by inserting three fingers into the mouth and looking for uh, any restriction of movement of opening of mouth the assessment of elbow is done by asking the child to reach up and touch the sky and assessment of c spine is done by asking the child to look up at the ceiling to conclude the important points to remember in pediatric examination is the lack of pain does not exclude arthritis compared to adults who present with typical joint pain and swelling children may actually present with loss of function or altered function or sometimes with regression of milestones um, we need to do a complete musculoskeletal examination in children not just the symptomatic joint a thorough history taking and examination may actually help us making the diagnosis and we can avoid doing expensive investigations thank you